another tutorial for the create mod in Minecraft where we're going to be taking a look at how to make this little iron farm that you can see behind me. And this is a really nice simple little design, it's completely early game so you don't need any redstone or brass or anything like that at all. And as you can see we're simply generating cobblestone, crushing it up, then we're washing it into iron nuggets which are going to go into our chest. So before we get started just have a little look in here. This is everything that you're going to need in order to create this farm and as you can see it's really not very much at all. It's all quite simple to make although you are going to have to go mining for iron before you can start this. So it's going to be a little bit of a later thing, not completely early game. But once you've got some iron together you will be ready to go. Right so the first thing we're going to want to get together is putting together this little water wheel system that you can see here. We're only using three water wheels so it's not going to cost very much. To that we're just going to go one, two, three, four, five with any building block at all, really doesn't matter, whatever you've got to hand really. And then we're just going to build it up in a little staircase like so. And this is leaving a gap in the middle for where we're going to be putting our wheels and then we'll just build it up at the back. Once you've made this little shape as you can see so, just point your little cursor just to that block you can see in the middle and place three water wheels side by side next to each other. So that as you can see the water can flow this way straight over the top of them down the side and tuck underneath and it's going into these slots that you can see on the water wheels. That way they are operating at their strongest. So if you pop some water over the top there you can see they're spinning nice and fast. Now we can come around to this side pop out that block and place a gear just there. We should be turning in a clockwise direction. From take an encased chain drive, place that onto it and one, two, three, four. So you've got five in a row coming off from the side. Then you need to come around the back of these chain drives so that we're on the other side now and you're going to place your mechanical drills facing in just like so, that they're going towards where these blocks are and then on the opposite side of that you're going to need to place some stairs. It doesn't really matter what the stairs are that you're using, I'm going to use copper, why not? Just so long as it is a stair block and you've got a one block gap just here in between your drills and your stairs. That's where the cobble is going to form later on. Now you can take hold of a trapdoor, any kind again will do. On the base just there, one, two, three, and then you can waterlog these stairs and it shouldn't go anywhere, it's now being held in place by these trapdoors. Just like so, so it's all nicely contained but these blocks are now waterlogged. From here we're going to place some blocks above those waterlogged stairs and directly above your drills as well and that's where eventually we're going to be putting the lava which will fall down and form the cobble just here. We won't do that immediately though otherwise you just end up with lava all over the place or with cobble being generated when you don't need it to. Just cap it off the end there and we'll just remember that we've got this little gap already made up for us. So next we're going to come underneath our stairs and we're going to make a line of any kind of blocks that is 12 long. So how many was that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and this just makes it a little bit easier when you're placing blocks from the other side it means you've always got something you can point at. Okay so from here we can now look at getting all of our belts set up and what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck underneath here and we're going to place four shafts in a row coming straight out from that first block of that run of blocks that we left there. This is so that it can be attached onto this encased train drive, that's where everything is going to be driven from. From there though we're going to count on six, so there's the one that we placed, two, three, four, five and six, place two shafts there, skip one, place another two shafts, then another two, then just one, then skip one and place another two. So we've placed in an awful lot of shafts here because we do have quite a lot of belts in order to run this contraption. If I just run around you'll see what's going to happen is we're going to be breaking down the cobble there, it goes into this chest and from there it's going to get split into two belts just so that we can double our processing speed. These belts then all need to be running at different speeds so that's why we need the extra shafts. So from here though we can get all these belts set up, what we're going to do 
Let's just come in and we'll just right click with a belt onto the shaft and you should see this red line comes off it, this sort of fuzzy red line. This is telling you that this is the path the belt is going to take and if it's red you can't place it, in this case because we're not attaching it onto a shaft. But if you go onto the shaft that turns green, just say, yep, this is where you can place it. But for this first belt, you're actually going to skip that first shaft, go on to the next one, just like there. So it's running right over that shaft in the middle. And it's actually attaching onto this one. Second belt, though, much, much easier. Just place that side by side using up those two. And then these ones easier as well. Place that there right up to the end, going over this one. And again, place that there and right up to the end. So you've got these four belts lined up with those two at the back running over additional shafts. In order to get everything linked up so it's actually starting to run, you will need to pop another shaft just up here onto this encased chain drive and then attach the two with a belt again. And you should see that both of these belts are running in a nice clockwise direction. These ones aren't moving yet because we haven't connected them. Okay, so with all the belts set up, we can now start getting the actual mechanical stuff set up as well. And we're going to need to use a chest and we're going to place it just here on this belt before it splits into two. So just there, and then place another one next to it so that we can make it into a double chest. From there, you can take an andesite funnel and place that going into the chest from the belt where the cobblestone is going to be generated. And then coming out from the chest though on the other side, have two andesite funnels so that it's going to be going onto both of these belts you can see just here. From there, you can then place your mills. So you're going to need two of them side by side above this belt just here and then you're going to need andesite funnels going into those as well from the belts just so that you can funnel your cobble straight into both of your mills. You're then going to need to place a couple of andesite funnels on the other sides of the mills as well so that the gravel can come out and then we're going to need to set up our washers. Don't worry that this one isn't moving right now, that's going to need to run at a different speed to this belt so we're going to set that up a little bit later. For now what we'll do is we'll run around the back we're going to place a couple of blocks down, just like so. On top of those, we can place our fans, which I haven't got out yet. Place your fans onto the little blocks that we've just placed, as you can see. We're leaving a gap in front of them because that's where the water's going to go. And then you're going to need a trapdoor. Or four, actually, because you're going to have to place a trapdoor just there and another trapdoor off to the other side. And then looking straight at your funnels, you can place another two trap doors. You have to crouch down just to place the second one. That's making a little space there that we can trap some water in. Just like so. Now when those fans blow through the water, they're going to be able to wash what is on the belts and the water is nice and contained and not causing any problems or flowing all over the place. And if you do end up with random stuff on your belts while you're building like this, just go up to them, right click on the belt rather than trying to get onto the item itself. Just go on the belt, right click on that, and you'll just take off whatever the item was. That way your belts are nice and clean. Okay, so we've got most things set up now in terms of our sort of infrastructure. We need to power our mill and we also need to power the fans which are going to be blowing through the water as well. But there is a slight issue here. If you have a look at this contraption, you will notice that this mill is spinning very fast. We're trying to grind down that cobblestone as quickly as we can, but we need the gravel to travel very slowly in front of these two fans. Otherwise it won't have time to wash down to become the iron and flint that we're after. Instead, it'll just go straight into the other chest as gravel, which isn't what we want. So we need this belt to be going nice and slow in comparison to everything else. So in order to do that, we can just use nice, simple, large and small cogwheels, but we'll clear out a little bit of space for ourselves. So we'll just dig down a bit just so that we've got some space to work. Because we're going to be putting all of our sort of speed nuss <laughs> underneath there. Okay, so we've made ourselves a little bit of space now. Let's get these fans powered and remembering, of course, that they need to be going slower than the normal speed that we've got going on the other side. So we'll place just a couple of encased chain drives on the opposite sides of the fans. They're nice and easy to use. And then we're going to punch out this block just here. 
that is underneath where the mill is coming out. So we're going to use just cogwheels in order to play around with the speed that these belts and contraptions and bits and pieces are going at. And we'll start off with placing a large cogwheel straight onto the shaft from there. This large cogwheel is going to be powering the mill as well, so that's why we're using that rather than just another shaft. And onto that we're going to place a small cogwheel. Now remember that in order to speed up, you go from a large cogwheel to a small one, and to reduce your speed, you go from a small one to a large. So we're going to take a large cogwheel now, and we're going to put it just off to one side from that small wheel. And you can see, if you look at how fast the shaft is turning, sort of performing one rotation on the small one compared to the large one, it is a marked difference. That is going much faster than the large, although we have, of course, changed direction. From there, though, we can pop a shaft onto the end of that large cogwheel, and then we're going to be lacing a small cogwheel onto the end of that. And then we just need to power these two encased chain drives just here, but again, we might as well make it go a little bit slower again. So we're going to place a large cogwheel just off the corner of the small wheel. You can't go side by side, so I couldn't place a large cogwheel there. For example, it wouldn't be able to power from the smaller cog. They do have to go at a diagonal. But that's fine, so we can just pop a small one over onto the other side, and then that should be powering our fans. It is, and they are blowing, which is always good to see. And then if we come around the side, we can use this nice big cogwheel here to power the belt that is through there. So if you just remove this little block that was in our way, we can crouch down and have a look. Now, as soon as I remove that block, uh, the water is going to come spilling out because we've just placed that on the top. Don't worry though, it's not going to go anywhere, and it's not like it can flood redstone or anything like that. I'll just tuck down and then we can place this shaft just off that shaft that you can see there, which is already in the belt. That was the additional one that we placed before, and as soon as you do that, it stops the water from flowing, so it's nice and easy. And then keep going until we are attached onto this cog. And now, if we run around, you will see this belt is now moving, it's going in the right direction, and it is very much slower than the original speed, which is great. It means everything's going to get washed nice and slowly. While we're here, we might as well place down a couple of blocks, and on top of that, we're going to place a double chest. And this is where all of our goods are going to be collected. So we'll need to have a couple of andesite funnels just going into there. That's where all of our iron and flint is going to gather. But the very last thing we need to do now is power these mills. They are going to be our last stage, with the exception of putting lava in the top to set everything off. But this is the last bit of the sort of mechanical stages. So if we tuck ourselves down here again, we can use this large cogwheel. Remembering that we go from large to small, then we are speeding up. And remember, we want it to go faster because it's the mill that we're powering. So if we just place a small cogwheel just off to that right-hand corner there, we can then place a shaft coming from that. Onto that, place a large cogwheel. So this cog is now going at the same speed as that smaller one. So this is, hasn't actually changed speed at this point. But if we place a small one going off the corner from there, that is going to be going very much faster. From here, we can then place a vertical gearbox. Into that, we can place a shaft and another one. Conveniently, we are right in front of this mill. So we can just pop another little cogwheel on there and our mill is spinning nice and fast. And so we've got our speed changes. Everything is going to be able to be as efficient as possible. From here, we can come back around. And last but not least, we need to pop some lava just there. Oh, he's going to get burnt. I know he's going to get milled. <laughs> Pick him up. So if you pop your lava just in that middle block, it will spread out to either side. There we go. From there, it's going to get ground up by these drills. They're not going particularly fast, but that's fine. This is not a system that can take a huge volume. We just want it to tick over nicely in the background. But there you have it. That is everything you need to do in order to create this little iron farm. I've decorated mine up a little bit just by chucking in some more andesite blocks interspersed with these stone bricks, just so that it looks a little bit roughed up around the edges, I suppose. But I hope you'll agree with me that this is quite a simple little contraption to make when you're early game. It shouldn't be too difficult to get these materials together. And now at least you've got a constant supply of iron coming in. But that's going to be it from me for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Happy Minecrafting, everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!